when I saw the photos, you know, in the fall, with these trees behind it, it's going to look gorgeous. It's just going to really pop out. Hi, I'm Jane Wilson, and I'm the architect for the Three Day Cottage. I've been um, in architecture now for about 20 years. I really enjoy helping people to really create their dream homes, to be able to find spaces for them to live and to be happy in. Jane and I first met when she moved to Ottawa and she was looking for a lot to build her passive home. And strange enough, the lot that she was looking at was a lot that I was very familiar with because my wife Natasha and I had looked at that same lot about a year prior to that. I knew that when I came here and I wanted to build a home in a place where I didn't know anyone, I didn't know the contractors, we had to go through the process of selecting a contractor. I think I interviewed four or five different contractors I knew I wanted to go towards passive house. And when I was talking to the different contractors, a couple of them gave me a real green wash, that idea that, uh, oh yeah, they knew what they were doing. They could build energy efficient buildings. But when I queried them a little further, they, they either didn't have real experience or not really that idea or grasp or knowledge in being able to take um, the building to the extent that I wanted to. When I had our first meeting with Casey and it was in his home that he had just built for himself and his family to passive house standards, I knew I had, I had finally found the person who could build uh, our house. With Jane's house, it was a similar setup to what we're doing with Kim and her partner in the sense that she brought us on to help with the envelope to make sure that we get the building nice and airtight and ready for finishing. We took it a little bit farther for her. We brought it to the end of drywall, but then from there, her and her husband took over. So it was really, uh, I think I was really lucky in terms of having them as the builder on our house. You know, we've been in the house now for five years and it's been perfect. We really like living here. The house feels good. It was well built. The insulation is great. The air tightness is great. Oh, now I'm talking like an architect. Um, it just, it's a nice place to live, a very comfortable home to live in. I had said, you know, I really like the feel of, of Jane for some reason, she kind of resonates with me. And so he said, okay, I think that's a good choice. I will reach out to her and uh, he did. And then he responded to me a little while later saying, okay, she's on board. I'm like, yes, that's awesome. <laughs> One of the things that I really loved was the cement floor. I love the look of it. It just seems very practical to me as well. She had big windows that really let the light in. She had a loft and it was overlooking the, her great room. So that was, that was really good too. It was a really nice combination. It wasn't like all wood paneling or all drywall. It was, it was a nice mix of both. So it was very interesting. She had a really cute little wood burning stove. Just a lot of things that I really appreciated and, and liked about uh, the floor plan, the way the floor plan was. So yeah, it was, uh, it was really nice to, to see her home and how she had uh, designed it. If you're building a typical minimum building code home or you're doing a small project, you could have the design done ahead of time and you can go shop around for your contractor and choose the best price if that's really what you're going for. Uh, just remember that best price doesn't mean best quality or best product at the end of the day. I won't get into that right now. However, if you're looking to build a healthy, comfortable and efficient home, you need to make sure that you do an integrated design process. And what that means is that you bring all of the key players together from the start and you have them working together. So that means it's going to be yourself as the client, as the homeowner, as well as the architect and or designer, the energy advisor and your contractor. And your contractor will bring in all the required subcontractors when they are required to be involved in the project. So when, when I start a project, the, the first thing is to really understand what the clients want to have. And 
I found that, that often the people that, that I'm working with, they've done a lot of discussion. They've, they know what they want to have and they have lists, they have images. Um, this is all really good. It's a good place to start. So just coming up with all of your ideas and the reasons why, you know, kind of like the bigger picture, not, not the details, but the bigger picture of, you know, what are you looking for in a home? Um, what kind of feel do you want? It's kind of touchy feely stuff, but it's not like, you know, how big is the bathroom going to be? What kind of colors your vanity going to be? What, what kind of tiles do you want? Um, a lot of those decisions we haven't even made yet because we're going to be doing that work ourselves. Uh, but it's more about the feel of the house. Um, you know, what do you want to be doing in the space? Uh, all of that uh, information and detail I hadn't really considered before. And, um, you know, if you, if you like to cook or you like to sit on the deck with a glass of wine or um, you like to putter around in, in the woods, um, if you want to refinish furniture and you want a workshop, things like that I think are really important to figure out up front. We start out with two, three options. Option A had the garage in the basement and also a workroom off to the side of the house, which would be situated underneath a screen porch connected to the main level. It also had a full bath in the basement and a game room, a place for storage. So it was pretty extensive. The, the second option reduced that a little bit and actually I said, well, maybe the driveway comes in from a different direction. Would that work better with the hill? And in this one, we started to develop the aspect that option B tended to reduce some of the build a little bit. What we started to say, what, what was important uh, for Kim and Francois was to have a covered outdoor space where some of their projects, like the renovation of furniture and things like that could be outside but under a balcony and that balcony was the screen porch for the main. On the main floor option A versus option B. Option A put the screen porch away from the lake but did allow for a very clear view of the lake. Option B connected the, the screened in porch more directly with the main kitchen living area, but did have the disadvantage that from the inside, particularly during the winter months, you wouldn't get as direct a view of the lake. The great thing is that the site is absolutely gorgeous. It's on a hill above a small lake and very private, real connection to nature. What we wanted to do was to work with the hill to be able to get both a good view of the lake, but also so that Kim and Francois would be able to have easy access to the outside. Option A had a very sort of secluded office. The intent for Kim and Francois is to be able to spend more time there. They both have jobs where they can work out of the office and this would give them the opportunity to have a place to both work there but also when they wanted to forget about the office it had its own space. The kitchen in option A was fairly simple, straight run and had had sort of a nice connection with the outside. Yeah, The kitchen in A does look out towards the lake, but it looks out towards the lake across the living room. The kitchen in plan B does that also, but it also has direct access out to the south side. And that door going out to the south side is where Kim plans to have gardens and being able for her to go directly from the kitchen and go out and pick that tomato that she's seen from the kitchen has just ri ripened. That was one of the important things uh, to include in the design. Option B 
has a little bit more complexity to it. We reduce the office space a bit, and often in most cases you just need that, that desk and a chair, but it also took into account that there would be a closed-in pantry, and that pantry, of course, would be very efficient, a good place for food storage. Kim and Francois are big cooks. They, they, they love having people over and cooking up delicious things, so that was important for them. The best way to keep uh, the guest time under control is to make them comfortable, but not too comfortable. For the bunk space in op option A, we made that even more minimalist. It wasn't actually in a room itself. It is in the hallway. The other difference between option A and option B is option A gives that opportunity that at the top of the stairs, you're able to look right back down at the main living space. That's kind of nice for sort of an open communication type of feel. Option B doesn't have that, and the advantage of that is that there is more privacy for the people up in the, the loft. It also would allow energy of not having to heat as much the upstairs. So they're, they're balanced between both situations. And when I speak with the client with these options, I'm actually querying them. I'll sometimes put something in uh, to the plan that they didn't ask for or they didn't expect just to get their reaction. And then I listen to them. And in that, through a series of different options, you know, does a porch go off this side of the house? Does it go off that side of the house? Where actually is the view? You know, how do they move around the kitchen? It's with the dialogue that we get down, hone down option by option to get actually a plan that works for the client, that gets what they want to have in the project, and at the same time makes me happy because some of those things, like the way that I, I can situate the windows for the view, the way that I know the light is going to come into the house. These kind of things are the things that I start to add to the plan and work in conjunction with what are what is the needs of, of the client. Glad you tuned in for episode three of the Three Day Cottage. If you haven't already, hit subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notified when our next episode gets released. And on the next episode, Jane will be describing the changes that she made to plan C so that I could get some accurate numbers for Kim and her partner.